Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. In today's lesson, we're going to be going over how to fix a laggy stream. Trying to diagnose and fix a laggy stream can be an extremely frustrating experience. Although OBS is really good at telling you what type of lag you're having, it doesn't really quite tell you how to fix it. So by the end of this video, I want you to be able to walk away from one, being able to diagnose exactly what kind of lag you're having, and two, how to fix it. So the first step in all of this is finding out what kind of lag you're experiencing. OBS has a very helpful stats window that can help you monitor your stream in real time. The stat window is extremely helpful because it'll tell you what kind of lag you're experiencing, which will then make diagnosing and fixing it a lot easier. To open up the stats window in OBS, click on view and then select stats. From there, the stats screen window should pop up. Here's where you should be able to determine if you are missing frames due to rendering lag, skipped frames due to encoding lag or dropped frames. What is encoding and rendering lag? Encoding lag happens when the CPU or GPU is at its maximum capacity. So if you're running a single PC setup, your goal is to make any changes either within your OBS stream settings or your in-game settings to lower your CPU or GPU usage anything to be able to give your PC the additional resources it needs to be able to encode properly. The biggest indicator that you're experiencing encoding issues is the error that pops up on the bottom left hand of your screen that reads encoding overloaded. Consider turning down video settings or using a faster encoding preset. Rendering lag happens when your GPU is at its max capacity. OBS usually requires anywhere from 5 to 10% of your GPU to capture, process, and then render the footage before it sends it out to your stream. This happens regardless if you're using the X264 preset or NVENC. Luckily, encoding and rendering lag tend to stem from the same issues, which makes it easy because they tend to have the same solutions as well. Fixes for encoding and rendering lag. Limit or cap your in-game frames per second to 60 FPS. CPU-heavy games will push performance to its fullest in order to make the game look its best. Limiting your in-game frames will keep your CPU usage in check, leaving additional resources in OBS Studio. You can usually limit your FPS inside of your in-game settings, or if you wanted to use third-party software, I suggest something like Rivatuner, as that will limit the refresh rate on your monitor, achieving the same effect. Lower the common FPS value in OBS. I know, I know, having a 60 FPS stream is the golden benchmark for Twitch, but dropping it down to 48 or 30 FPS might be a good short-term fix until you can find if there's a bigger issue at hand. More often than not, you'll find that most viewers are actually watching you at a lower resolution than what you're actually streaming at and a lower frame rate change the output scaled resolution. While it might be tempting to stream at 1080p, it's usually not ideal for non-partnered streamers. With Twitch's bitrate cap being at 6,000 kilobytes per second, having a clear full HD stream is just not attainable. So it's advised that you drop your resolution down to 864p or 720p. Delete any unnecessary browser sources. Browser sources that are used to add custom alerts or effects to your stream can also use additional CPU. Try condensing all your alerts into one browser source and then deleting anything that you don't need. This can also apply to OBS plugins or active overlays. Lower your base canvas resolution in OBS. If you go to the video tab in your settings and change your base canvas resolution down to 1280 by 720p, this will lessen the CPU and GPU usage OBS needs in order to downscale to a lower resolution thus giving your PC more overhead. The only annoying part here is that it will require you to resize any sources that are nested inside your scene. Disable Windows Game Bar. Game Bar is an overlay made by Windows to assist gamers either recording gameplay, taking screenshots, or connecting with friends, etc. But it can have an impact on your game or your stream's performance since it's always running in the background. Set OBS to run as administrator. To do this, you're gonna right click on your OBS icon, scroll down to Properties, Compatibility tab, check the box that's listed, run this program as an administrator. Cool side note is that Jim, the creator of OBS, worked with Microsoft directly to make Windows prioritize the GPU for rendering when running OBS as admin. If using the X264 encoder, switch encoding preset to very fast. The OBS developers themselves have confirmed that setting anything slower than very fast is going to yield diminishing results. This preset provides the very best bang for your buck in regards to quality versus CPU usage. If using the NVENC encoder, drop encoding preset to quality. Much like the X264 presets, max quality can often yield diminishing results. If using the NVENC encoder, turn off psycho visual tuning and look ahead. Turning off psycho visual tuning and look ahead can give your GPU just that little bit of extra resources that it needs. What are dropped frames? Dropping frames is the only symptom that is not hardware related and is the hardest to fix a laggy stream, meaning it has nothing to do directly with your PC's components, but rather your internet. So when you're dropping frames, typically this means that your upload speed is not capable of handling the bitrate set within OBS. This will cause your stream to buffer and have massive frame skips, making your stream unwatchable. Fixes for drop frames. First, check your upload speed. 
Now, this might seem like a complete no-brainer, but checking your upload speed routinely is a good place to start. As OBS doesn't affect drop frames directly, your ISP could be at fault. I've had plenty of situations where sometimes just unplugging and plugging back in your router fixes the issue. Disable the auto setting when selecting your ingest server. When the server selection is left on automatic, OBS will always default to the best server option. There have been instances though where the specific ingest server could be experiencing heavy loads. Switching to another server inside the same state could improve your stream's connection. Living in California, I had a major issue when connecting to the San Francisco servers. It was driving me nuts for weeks. Changed it to the San Jose ingest server, fixed all my problems. Enable dynamic bitrate. Now, this is one of the coolest features that was released in OBS as of version 24.0. Once OBS notices any fluctuations in your network stability, it will adjust your bitrate to maintain a smooth stream. To enable this, you're going to go to Settings, Advanced, Network, check the box next to Dynamically Change Bitrate to Manage Congestion. Whitelist OBS with your firewall or antivirus software. To whitelist OBS in your firewall settings, you're going to want to hit the Windows button type Firewall and select Windows Defender Firewall. On the left hand side, click Outbound Rules. On the right hand side, click New Rule, then Program, then follow the program path to find OBS, then click Allow Connection. Leave all boxes checked, name the rule OBS, finish. Uninstall any first party motherboard network drivers. Certain motherboard manufacturers will pack in specific proprietary drivers that have been known to cause dropped frames. I had previously owned a Gigabyte motherboard which was dropping frames like crazy. I removed their killer network drivers and it fixed the problem. The only thing it was killing was my stream. Call your ISP. Now this is an absolute last ditch effort if you tried everything in your power to try and fix your drop frames. It might be time to call your internet service provider. Schedule them to send out a technician, they can test the line to see if there's any congestion or issues, but I have known other streamer friends that this has worked for them. And with all these suggestions I just threw at you, I'm hoping that one of these helps fix your problem. I, like many other streamers, have been there and I know the pain. Streaming can be an extremely rewarding experience, but it has its pain points and technical issues are definitely on the forefront. I wish you the best of luck in fixing your problem. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe. If you're looking for a written version of this tutorial, you can check out my website. I will leave a link to this guide down below. Happy streaming.